Hi, I'm Simon Walden. I'm a software developer with uh, Imagination Technologies in San Francisco, and I'm going to be talking about the Power VR Wizard architecture. This is a GPU that can do ray tracing in hardware. Now, Imagination is a developer of hardware IP, uh, mostly for uh, GPUs for mo mobile devices, such as tablets and uh, smartphones and so forth. Uh, and here we have a development system. This is a PC. This contains, uh, it's just, just a standard PC running Ubuntu Linux. And it contains a development card with our PowerVR GR6500 uh, chip on it. This is used for development purposes. Um, in production, of course, um, the uh, device would be used with the Android operating system. So we're also demonstrating how our ray tracing architecture can be used with a standard game engine. Uh, now, a game engine is a piece of middleware that provides a platform for the uh, artwork and the gameplay that would be developed by the commercial uh, game developer. And then, then it sits on top of the graphics device driver, which drives the actual chip. Uh, in this case, we're using the Unreal Engine. This is a commercial uh, game engine. It's used in many uh, A-line uh, games, using obviously Unreal Tournament and uh, the Final Fantasy game. And the way that this works uh, with our actual graphics device driver is using uh, the Vulkan API. This is an API that uh, has been developed recently for uh, efficient, uh, for performance critical applications, which require maximum efficiency from the hardware. So here we have an example uh, game on the Unreal Engine. It's an example project called uh, Sun Temple. This is, uh, the configuration is that uh, the Sun Temple is running top of uh, the Unreal Engine, which is using our Vulkan API on top of the PowerVR GPU. Now we're running Chairs and Tables, which is uh, another project. This is a tutorial project uh, for Unreal Engine. This is ru running using the standard uh, mobile shader, uh, just regular raster graphics as you would get in a, a normal mobile device. Uh, but now we can change it to a ray traced mode. And you can see, we've, since we've added the, uh, the bookcase and uh, these other mirrors to the scene to uh, demonstrate reflections and ray tracing much more clearly, you can see um, how much more realistic the reflections are, not just in the mirrors, but on the table, on the ground as well. Uh, you can see uh, in the vase on the table, uh, realistic refractions. Uh, also, the shadows are uh, produced by uh, ray tracing, so they're much more realistic than the sort of uh, shadows you typically get in a, in a raster graphics where you have to do pre-baked shadow maps. Um, typically in raster graphics, uh, reflections are done with pre-renders as well. In this case, this is all done in one pass, and this is being done live here. I can switch live between raster graphics and ray tracing, uh, and you can see much more realistic reflections, much more realistic uh, refractions and so forth in the vase. And uh, hopefully, you can see that uh, much uh, clearer shadows as well. So the shaders that you're watching generating this scene are generated by the Unreal Engine in much the same way that uh, it would generate its standard shaders. We made relatively small changes to the engine in order to generate shaders that are specific for ray tracing. Uh, both, uh, both these shaders, the raster ones and the ray tracing shaders, uh, use uh, the same Vulkan API. Uh, in the case of ray tracing, we've added our own extensions to Vulkan to support ray tracing. One advantage of uh, ray tracing is the flexibility concerning the uh, lens shader. In this uh, scene, everything is ray traced, including the, uh, the rays that are fired from the camera lens to the first object that you see. Uh, this is produced by a lens shader, a piece of code, just like the vertex shader and fragment shader and so forth of a standard uh, graphic setup. Uh, but you have much more flexibility about the type of lens. In the case of the raster, most of this is fixed functionality, the type of projection and so forth. So we could do, for example, uh, lens distortion. Uh, and another thing that we've been experimenting with is panoramic uh, lenses. This is like a full 360 or full spherical view. I can switch to it here. And you can see when viewed flat, it's a fairly strange image, but everything, the full sphere is visible on this flat surface here. If I stop the camera, you can see that I can move objects from one side to the other. And you get a full 360 view. The full view is uh, available. This, is a, this sort of system is used in virtual reality headsets. Um, it's produced uh, by either live video or CG. And then, although it looks strange like this, there are viewers, for example, uh, YouTube's uh, VR viewer, in which you can move around the animation in real time and change the position 
while playing while playing back a, a, re a pre-rendered sequence. So here we see that same sequence as viewed in YouTube's VR viewer. Uh, now we only see a portion of the uh, the full 360 view, and it looks relatively normal. I can use this control in the top left to uh, choose which portion of the image to view, or I can dr click and drag the image around and move different uh, parts of and view different parts of the full sphere. Uh, and then, it, when I've chosen which part to view, I hit play, and I can see the rest of the sequence uh, from whatever angle I've chosen. As you can see, I can drag around at any point and view the full uh, 360 uh, sphere. So in conclusion, the Power VR Graphics Wizard architecture provides for realistic reflections, refractions, and shadows uh, in real time. Uh, it also provides flexibility for lens shaders, allowing uh, virtual reality to be rendered in a single pass. Uh, and all this, everything you've seen is performed uh, in real time on a low power mobile architecture.